Well, here we are with chromosomes again. He said, well, I thought we were talking about Mendel. Well, we are. Well, did Mendel know anything about chromosomes? I don't think he knew a thing about chromosomes. Did anybody know much about chromosomes back when Mendel was doing his experiments? No, they didn't. Fact is, it's been since I was born that biologists figured out how many chromosomes we people have on our cells. Uh, here they are, 46. These are from a human being, male human being or female male human being. And so uh, let's talk about this type of analysis uh, for a moment. Uh, again, uh, the chromosomes line up, line up like this, like little soldiers? No, you have to pay a lab some money. And the lab would be looking for chromosomal abnormalities. But how does this work? Uh, how, how does this type of analysis done? Uh, well, it's um, I haven't exactly looked over anybody's shoulder, but I know approximately how it was done. Uh, first of all, a technician that knows what they're doing has to get one cell, one cell with a nucleus. Well, what's the easiest cells to get? Blood cells, okay. But not just any blood cell will do. They must get, the technician must get a white blood cell as opposed to the bazillions of red blood cells. Very few white cells, bazillions of red blood cells. Why not use a red blood cell? They'd be a whale of a lot easier to get a hold of. And very simple. Uh, red blood cells at maturity do not have a nucleus. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus. So, at maturity anyway. So, a white blood cell is isolated. Big old nucleus. And so, uh, then once that white blood cell is isolated, the technician hits that with various stains and uh, chemicals and so forth. Uh, what do those do? Well, they uh, cause the chromosomes to coil up, for one thing. Secondly, they dissolve all the phospholipid bilayer membranes in the cell. Um, and uh, uh, so the chromosomes are kind of out on their own. And they also stain. You see some kind of banding pattern in this picture? That's from staining. And so uh, then the uh, chromosomes, though, might all be on top of each other. So the technician does what's called a squash. That spreads the chromosomes out so they're not on top of each other. Then click and then cut and paste and match them up. Well, how are they matched up? Well, either by hand or by computer, maybe today. I don't know. Uh, but we, it's arranged in this system of how many pairs? 23 pairs, that's right. And they are matched up by very visible similarities. And each pair is called a homologous pair. A homologous pair, that means there's something similar between these two chromosomes in pair number one. That is two chromosomes, right? Are these, is this two chromosomes? Yes, it is. And they are what? Duplicated or unduplicated? They are unduplicated. As opposed to these here that are duplicated. Uh, you see the two centromeres, I mean the two uh, chromatids joined at a centromere. And so, back to these guys over here. How would these be lined up? As you look across the pairs, you can see something about each half of a pair. Each half of a pair is the same length. For example, pair number three. This chromosome is the same length as the other one in pair number three. Same thing in pair number four, pair number five, six, seven, etc. So that is one visible similarity between both halves of a homologous pair. They're both the same length. Now there's something else that's similar as well. Uh, that's a little easier to see uh, in this uh, right here, this uh, this picture of duplicated chromosomes. What's this pinched in area called again? Centromere. And is the centromere always at the exact center of the chromosome? Well, it's pretty close here, but what about over here? No, kind of off-center, and you can look at the rest of them. Uh, so uh, actually very few of them have the uh, centromere uh, very close to the center. Well, what can we say about both halves of a homologous pair? We can say that wherever the centromere is for one uh, half of the pair, it's exactly the same place for the other half. Same centromere location. So what can we say about both halves of a homologous pair? Number one, they're the same length. Secondly, the same centromere position. And uh, by the way, back in these over here, can you see where the centromere would be? Uh, you see the pinched-in area? Sure you do. So you can still match them up, even if they're unduplicated. 
uh, at least partly based on the central mirror location. So same length, same central mirror position. The last thing, look at pair number seven. See those dark and light bands? You look across here, pair 11. See those dark and white bands? They're matching, are they not? That's from the staining. This is artificial. It's from the staining. So what can we say about both halves of a pair? The third uh, <coughs> visible similarity, similarity, same banding pattern when stained. Same length. Same central mirror position, same banding pattern when stained. And so that's how, uh, in this analysis, the homologous pairs are matched up. Now let's, uh, let's think about a couple other things before we shut this one down. Where does half of each pair originally come from? From each parent, right? Uh, looking at pair number one, can you tell which one came from which parent by looking? No, you can't. Let's say we knew this left one came from the person's mother in the what? The A cell, obviously. And then uh, that would mean the right one would have come from the person's father in the sperm cell. So half of each pair comes in the egg cell, half of each pair comes in the sperm cell. And uh, so we can say for human beings, for human beings, uh, how many chromosomes in a human egg cell and a human sperm cell? Half of each pair, that would be what? 23. And so 23 plus 23, 23 in the egg, 23 in the sperm, they come together, form a single cell called a zygote by the process called fertilization. And so that first cell, uh, after fertilization, 23 plus 23, that first cell has what? 46. 46. Both halves of each pair. All right. Uh, I think we got it for this one. Uh, let's shut this one on down.